one. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's good to see all of you. Good to be seen. We love you, we love you, we love you. How's everyone doing? Best and highly favored. Good. That's as well. You are the essence of your creation is blessed and highly favored. All right. Let us open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, once again, we just thank you. We love you. We adore you so much. We just thank you for this beautiful day that you've allowed us to wake up in, to be in our right frame of mind, body, and spirit. We thank you for your loving arms around us as we slept through the night, and we thank you for your loving arms as we go through forth in this day. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us with our home, our food, our clothes, our finances, our transportation. We thank you for blessing us with good health in our bodies, that no sickness, disease, virus, or infection could exist in our bodies. We thank you for using us for signs, wonders, and miracles, our gift and our talents. We thank you for blessing over us as we open up our hearts and minds and receive the word from the Holy Spirit, that we may apply it into our lives and take the world that is good, holy, and beautiful for that as the essence of our creation. Bless over all the churches in the world that we all teach and preach the same thing, to be in one accord, that there be no division amongst us. Bless over our family, our friends, our children. Bless over those that are left short to myself, that you help them. Bless over those that are struggling, that you continue to be with them. Bless over those that are having health issues, that you touch them in a manner that can help them heal. We thank you for blessing over the homeless and their journey. Bless over those that are traveling. Give them traveling grace. Bless over us as we travel. Give us traveling grace to and from our destination that we make it back to our destination safely. We thank you for all that you allowed us to see, say, and do. And so it is. And so it is. Amen. Amen and amen. Yeah. All right. Who has a praise report? Who wants to go first? Anyone? Anyone? Oh, don't no, all rush it once. Everyone should have a praise report. Go for it, Sudi. So, uh, I think I mentioned last week that uh, at the end of the list, we are going to return our car. But I think I think the dealership is really good also because at the end of the list, we actually have positive equity, something that seldom happens. So, the car is in the value so much that they actually uh, gave us uh, a check for us to return the car to them. And we returned good. this uh, just like three days ago. Very good. Isn't it great to have equity in your cars and it's a lease and you can turn it in and get money for it? <laughs> that is a blessing. Everything on your planet is driven by your economics. And when you receive economics, it's a blessing because it takes away or adds to your financial burdens or your financial freedoms, depending on how you want to look at them. So congratulations on receiving money for your vehicle. Good job. Our purge report is we heard from our son yesterday. He is doing outstanding in boot camp. He's super excited. So we haven't heard him this excited in such a long time. So continue to lift him up in prayer as he uh, continues his journey. Anybody else have a praise report? Sis? I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. I got it on okay. first time. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations on manifesting that and deliberately creating a place of your own. It's been really exciting watching you create job or actually creating move, job, car, and home and finances. <laughs> Congratulations on that. It's always too exciting again to Thank watch you really create. So good job and enjoy. Even though we 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 worked half the day yesterday, we we're a little bit sore, but it was yes. good job for the body. <laughs> yes. <Slim right. laughs> but nonetheless, it is a it is a huge blessing. So congratulations to her and my niece. We expect to see more greater things than these for the greater works that you do. You too shall do. All right. Anybody else have a great report? Love you. Got anything? Um, I I can say I'm uh I'm on track within the next week or so to start school. I'm really finding out what I want to do with uh, right. with yourself. Good job! Congratulations! 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 Especially when you get higher education or education in a new field to start a new journey. So we're excited about that. We know yes. you're great at it. <laughs> Rufino, you have anything for us? Everyone, say hello to Rufino. Rufino. Hey. Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. 
Good to have him on. He supported us when we had the uh, revival over at New Century for the two days, and it was wonderful meeting him and seeing him and getting to feel that energy and giving him a big old lovely hug <laughs> and introducing him to all the other people and ministers. And she is actually, uh, he is actually uh, friends with Melissa. So Melissa uh, gave him the address and brought him and Mama Rose. So that was a blessing in disguise. So we're happy to have you on this morning. You have a praise report for us? Anything you want to share? It could be old, it could be new, it doesn't matter. No? <laughs> oh, don't be okay, shy. Um, Go for it. Okay, uh, thank you, Lord, for giving me, giving me the opportunity to meet these wonderful people in the I feel great to be around people like this. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All sure. right. Absolutely. Well, when two or three are gathered together in his name, there are positive things that happen because we lift each other up. And the reason why we do praise reports is so that one, we give the praises to the one who's deserving, which is the one who gifted us with the gifts that we have, which is God. And we also use the praise report to encourage one another to continue on with deliberately creating through our week. So thank you for that. We are on page 1039 of our lesson. The title that the Holy Spirit has given is the Savior's Vision. The Savior's Vision. So if you have it in your lessons, if not, you can listen along carefully with us. Question number one, what is the Savior's Vision? Anybody anybody have an idea, Hypo a hypothesis, if you will, an educated guess? Savior's, well, Savior's gift. Remember what we taught you what Savior is, which is the second question. So we'll make the second one the first. What is salvation? Anyone remember what salvation is? No, Pastor? Yes, Pastor? No? Okay. To get, out, to get out from, from the misconceptions, the, the wrongs, the difficulties, and to reach um, what uh, the Savior wants us to be. Absolutely. Good answer. We'll add on to that in the most simplest way. Mm. Salvation is undoing your mistakes that you all call sin. Mm. It undoes the mistakes. Oh, I made a mistake. Okay, God can forgive you. You have to forgive yourself. Holy Spirit comes in and allows that mindset, which is the Christ mind, to undo the error. Make sense? So now that you understand the definition of what salvation is, what do you think the Savior's vision is if it's to undo the mistake? So the Savior's vision is what? Anybody want to give a give a shot at? Maybe the new beginning? Okay, a new beginning. Absolutely. That's a great answer. A new beginning for what might have been a mistake to saying, you know what? I've learned from the mistakes and I can move on and do better from the mistakes I've learned without judging myself, condemning myself, guilt tripping myself or trying to guilt trip somebody else or attack them within judgment. Great answer. Question number three, how is the savior's vision obtained? Well, we kind of gave it to you in the first two answers. <laughs> so if you were listening carefully, what would be the, what would you think the biggest one would be? Anyone? Forgiveness. Oh, forgiveness. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Forgiveness. Forgiveness and love. Forgiveness and love and no judgment. So you obtain undoing the mistake by saying, you know what? I made a mistake and I can forgive myself of this mistake and I can forgive someone else of their mistakes and I can move on. Now the undoing is obtained because as my nephew said, now it's a new beginning. How many times have you learned the, the old mistake over and over and over and over and over until you went, okay, I'm tired of bumping my head on that one, or I'm tired of <laughs> getting jumped on, so I'm going to learn, even when it has to be like, I'm going to keep my mouth shut in conversations, because some of those conversations caused arguments or disagreements or separation, or even led me into judgment. So you learn those, right, over time. How many times did it take you from bumping your head to look up, 
ease out, <laughs> slow down, right? If not, you keep jumping up and bumping your head. So you learn very quickly, I don't want that mistake. Even if you had financial issues and all of a sudden now your finances begin to change, now you've forgiven yourself for thinking that you are in lack, thinking that you are in debt, thinking that you owed anyone because you don't owe anybody. You are the lender, not the borrower. You're the head, not the tail. Does that make sense to everyone? Question number four, changing concept is blank ask. Changing concept is blank task. It's in your title lesson. <laughs> the the, there you go. Changing concept is savior is salvation's task. To change your concept. To change your concept from a perception to a perspective. Affirmation. I release my brothers and sisters. I release my brothers and sisters. What are we releasing from? Any judgment that we have cued from them, any fear, anything that does not align us with them. Excuse me, does that make sense? Yeah. All right, let us begin. Learning is change. So every question we asked you was about changing your mind from something that didn't work in the past. Many inventors who failed 444 times, if you were to ask them how many times did you fail, they will tell you none because each one was a trial and error, wasn't it? Because if they'd have failed, they would have given up and you wouldn't have the inventions you have today. You think Thomas Edison or Graham Bell gave up on the first try? Absolutely not. You think Apple gave up after his first idea of computers and then watches and then cell phones and all the other wonderful technologies you all have? <laughs> yes, Sudi. Well, actually, what they say is that, oh, that was not Australia. That is learning that that's not the way to do it. There, come on now. That's absolutely correct. And we have to take that same attitude as we go in dealing with salvation, undoing what we messed up on. God is a heart fixer and he can fix those things. So learning is change. Oftentimes when you all come to me and I said, okay, once you tell me whatever it is, the first thing that I'm asking you is, what did you learn from it? Because if you didn't learn anything from it, you're gonna repeat that lesson again in another form with another person in another place, in another position, blah, 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 blah. Salvation does not seek to use a means as yet too alien to your thinking to be helpful, nor to make the kinds of change you could not recognize. God is not the author of confusion, so it makes it very simple. It's not foreign to your thinking. Concepts are needed while perceptions last, and changing concepts is salvation's task. So notice concepts and perception are in the same boat. Everyone catch that? Concepts and perception, but we have to get you out of the concepts and into perspectives. For it must deal in contrast, what we're we talking about concepts, for it must deal in contrast, not in truth, which has no opposite and cannot change. Unwilling to bend. In this world's concepts are the guilty, bad, the good are innocent. And no one here but holds a concept of themselves in which they count the good to pardon them the bad. Does that make sense? In other words, you cannot serve two masters. You will love one or hate the other. In other words, you can't be healthy and sick at the same time. Does that make sense? You can't drive your car while mopping the floor. Cannot happen. You cannot be good and bad at the same time. Doesn't, you can't be rich and poor at the same time. Doesn't work. You cannot recognize your evil thoughts as long as you see value in attack. And this is why in your Bibles it says, judge not or you'll be judged because normally 
or always, judgment entails an attack. Judgment will guilt trip you. Judgment will make you feel fearful. Judgment will make you feel belittled. Judgment will make you feel unwanted, unworthy, lackful, separated, all of those things. You will perceive them sometimes, but will not see them as meaningless. And so they come in fearful form with content still concealed to shake your sorry concept of yourself and blacken it with still another crime. You cannot forgive yourself, there's the key, your innocence, for you are too confused about yourself. This is why we'll pick on the narcissists. This is why they can't change because they won't forgive themselves because they're still holding on to whatever hurt that was done to them and then they begin to do the same to others. So they cannot see themselves as innocent even though they will say, oh, I'm innocent. But then all along within their heart, they don't feel innocent because now they attack, attack, attack. And even within religion, it's an attack that if you don't believe how I believe, then you're not serving the same God or the same Lord or whatever the case might be. But should one brother or sister dawn upon your sight as wholly worthy of forgiveness, then your concept of yourself is wholly changed. So now, once we begin to forgive self, forgive our brothers and sisters, now the concept of ourselves begin to change. In other words, you stop tearing yourself down and you stop tearing other people down. You ever heard of the word backbiting? You don't backbite anybody. You don't stab them in the back. <laughs> Smile in their face and then as soon as they leave, you start talking all kinds of stuff about them. How no good they are, how bad they are, how they don't smell right, whatever the case might be. Your evil thoughts have been forgiven with your brother and sister because you let them all not affect you. So now, once you are not affected, Lovey, this applies to you especially, once you don't let those things affect you, whether it become from parents, girlfriend, work, wherever, now those thoughts no longer can dictate how you perform or how, and we're just using this as a tail on, not that we're picking on you, but to kind of help you along with your journey. Does that make sense? Yes, that was actually something that was standing out to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, whoa, how'd you say my name? Uh, we know your thoughts. This is where we know your thoughts and Jesus knew their thoughts. <laughs> well, he says, the things that I do, you too shall do in greater work. So when we know your thoughts, it's not necessarily knowing your thoughts, but raising ourselves to that vibration to understand what is going on. No longer do you choose that you should be the sign of evil and of guilt in them. And as you give your trust to what is good in them, you give it to the good in you. So it's kind of a reaping and sowing. What you put out is what you return. You all heard the statement. Treat people like you want to be what? Treated. Treated, yeah. So if you're treating them bad, do you want to be treated bad? Of course not. So if you treat them good, do you want to be treated good? It's kind of a no-brainer. In terms of concepts, it is this you see your brother and sister more than just a body, for the good is never what the body seems to be. Oh man, they got a they got a beautiful face. They got a pretty smile, and all along they can't stand you. Never just never trust the body. The body does not create the mind does. The action of the body are perceived as coming from the baser part of you, and thus of them as well. By focus upon the good, then the body grows decreasingly persistent in your sight. And will it length be seen as little more than just a shadow circling around the good? And this will be your concept of yourself when you have reached the world beyond the sight of your eyes alone can offer you to see. In other words, in the book of Matthew, my brother Jesus said, if the eye be full of darkness, then your whole body be dark. But if your eye be full of light, then your whole body be what? Full of light. And if you ever look at that scripture, it doesn't say eyes. 
the singular with I, the third I. That makes sense to everyone. Yeah. Your intuition, how you communicate with God. For you will not interpret what you see without the aid that God has given you. In other words, once the veil is lifted off, now you can see things for exactly what they are. Have you ever been around a person and still wondered and wondered and wondered, and then the actions ain't lining up with what they're saying, and you're still wondering and wondering and wondering? Well, when God aids you and lifts it up, you can go, oh, that person's a bold place. They're a, they're a what do you call it, um, habitual liar, or they're a, they're a thief, <coughs> or they're backbiters or whatever. And, and this is not to judge, but we're just showing you that when God gives you that vision, now you begin to learn, hey, I can't associate with this person. Does that make sense? And in God's sight, there is another world. They even tell you that in your book of Revelation, there's a new world. You live in that world just as much as this, for both are concepts of yourself, which can be interchanged, but never jointly held. You either love one or hate the other. The contrast is far greater than you think, for you will love this concept of yourself because it was not made for you alone. Why not? It was made for you to share it with everyone else, your brothers and sisters. Born as a gift for someone not perceived to be yourself, it has been given you. Ask and it is what? Given. Does it, is it given with a cost or is it given freely from God? Uh, free. Given freely, absolutely. Don't cost you anything. For your forgiveness offered unto your brother and sister has been accepted now for both of you. Once you forgive self and forgive the other ones, now Holy Spirit can come in and comfort and teach and begin to give you a new Christ mind thought. Here's a big one that most people will not adhere to. Have faith in your brothers and sisters who walks with you so that your fearful concept of yourself may change and look upon the good in your brothers and sisters that you might not be frightened by your evil thoughts because they do not cloud your view of your brothers and sisters. In other words, you won't have a judgment against them. There won't be an attack. It won't be that, oh, I'm smiling in Sudi's face and in Sudi, oh, I can't stand him. Oh my goodness. But I'm gonna keep the fake smile. We've had those people in our lives. Sometimes we were those people. <laughs> Sometimes they walked in and went, oh, I just don't like that person. Oh, my God, I can't stand them. Hopefully we've all grown from that and not holding on to that anymore. And all this shift requires is that you be willing that this happy change, happy change occur. It has to be a happy change, not a sad one, not a forced one. Why? Holy Spirit is the comforter, bring you happy thoughts, and the teacher teach you all things. On its behalf, remember what the concept of yourself that now you hold has brought you in its wake and welcome the glad contrast offered you. Hold out your hand that you may have the gift of kind forgiveness which you offer one whose need for it is just the same as yours. How many times have you had an argument over the phone or a debate over the phone or a disagreement over the phone or via text and you finally say, you know what, I'm going to forgive. And then notice when you forgive and whatever Holy Spirit begins to teach you, sometimes, oftentimes that person will also forgive, especially if they call you friend. And let the cruel concept of yourself be changed to one that brings the peace of God. We all want the what? Peace of God. In order to have the peace of God, you have to forgive self and forgive your brothers and sisters. So remember, salvation's vision is undoing that perception or that judgment or that evil thought that we had about that person. We don't like sister so-and-so because she always wearing hats in the, in the building. We don't like them because they come around, they, they stink. We don't like them because they're poor. We don't like them because they're Hispanic. We don't like them because they're black. We don't like them because they're Asian. 
We just don't like them because. We've all heard that. Why you don't like them? Oh, it's just something about them. <laughs> and they cannot give you a definite answer other than it's something about you. The concept of yourself that now you hold will guarantee your function here remain forever unaccomplished and undone. And thus it dooms you to a bitter sense of deep depression and futility. So when you see people depressed, having anxiety attacks, that are fearful, what haven't they done? Forgiven. They haven't forgiven, they haven't forgiven self. They haven't asked for forgiveness. So this is why they are in deep depression and futility. Yet it need not be fixed unless you choose to hold it past the hope of change and keep it static and concealed within your mind. Give it instead to God. Oh, there's a big one. Give it to, give it to God. Let go and let God. It was such a big cliche back in the day, still is. But if we truly give it to God, God will undo that which you messed up. But oftentimes what we do is we'll give it to God and put it in his hands. And then when it doesn't work the way we want, we'll snatch it back and say, oh, it didn't. he ain't working fast enough. He didn't do it the way I thought he was going to do it. He didn't deliver like I thought he was going to deliver. Who understands, so give it to God instead, who understands the change that it needs to let it serve the function given you to bring you peace that you may offer peace to have it yours and to give it to others. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes. Alternatives are in your mind. Here it is the word alternatives, meaning choices, are in your mind to use, and you can see yourself another way. Many people who have come to me over the years in counseling who didn't think they were pretty enough, skinny enough, wealthy enough, we had to through the Holy Spirit, change their mind about the way they saw themselves. Oftentimes we tell you all to look yourselves in the mirror and tell yourselves, I'm more than enough. I'm more than enough. I'm more than enough. And if you truly believe you're more than enough, you will be enough. And within that being enough supplies all your needs because then you come to realize you don't need anything. Why? God supplies what? All of your needs. It's kind of a stepping stone. Would you not rather look upon yourself as needed for salvation of the world instead of salvation's enemy? In other words, I'm going to keep judging. I'm going to keep convicting, condemning, not loving. The concept of the self stands like a shield. So even in your Bibles tells you to put on the whole armor of God. You have to put on your helmet, your breastplate, your shots, your spear, your sword, your shield. You ever seen a warrior go to combat and he forgot his pistol, he forgot the grenades, he forgot the rifle, he forgot everything. He just ran out there with just a civilian clothes and flip flops. <laughs> Not gonna win much, right? The concept of self stands like a shield a silent barricade before the truth and hides it from your sight. So this is when we begin to guilt trip ourselves about who God says we are versus who we think we are. I'm not good enough. God says you're beyond good enough because I created you. I'm not rich enough. You're richer than what you give yourself credit for because I made you richer than anything because you're the head, not the tail. You're blessed in what? Highly favored. All things you see are images because you look on them as through a barrier that dims your sight and warps your vision so that you behold nothing with clarity. This is where people judge you that don't even know you. They convict you without even talking to you. The light is kept from everything you see and most you glimpse a shadow of what lies beyond. At least you merely look on darkness <clears throat> and perceive the terrified imagings that come from guilty thoughts and concepts born of fear. As what you see is hell 
for fear is hell. For fear is hell. This is why God did not give you the spirit of what? Fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. All that is given you is for relief. The sight, the vision, and the inner guide, which is God, all lead you out of hell with those you love beside you and the universe with them. You free yourself, you free everybody around you. If Sudi starts upgrading his home and building it up and the equity in the house goes up, everybody around Sudi is going to look and start saying, oh, I need to step my game up. And it's kind of like keeping up with the Joneses. They're going to, if he does his lawn and it's upgraded, they're going to start doing their lawn. If he paints his house and puts um, extra stuff on it to make it look good and increase the value, they'll start doing the same. We've done the same theory where we went from 200,000 in value to almost over 600,000. 600, so we've increased based on what we started here. Make sense? And to each one, has God allowed the grace to be a savior to the holy ones, you all are the holy ones, especially entrusted to their care. But you have to have the mind of Christ, the right-minded. Oh, we thank you for 1111. We thank you for upgrades, downloads, and activations that are available for us. And so it is. And this, your brother and sister learns when first they look upon one brother and sister as they look upon themselves and see the mirror of themselves in them. This is why people shouldn't judge because as soon as you judge, whatever you're judging in that person is directly within you, but oftentimes people don't want to admit that. Does that make sense? This is why it says judge not or you'll be judged. Why? Because you're judging yourself. Thus is the concept of themselves laid by, for nothing stands between their sight and what they look upon to judge what they behold. I just told you that. And in this single vision, do they see the face of Christ and understand they look on everyone as they behold this one. So you have to see everyone as the Christ. You have to see everyone as yourself. That's really hard to do, especially when they're not doing the things that you would like them to do, but God gave them free will just like he gave you free will. For there is light where darkness was before. So let me pause here. The absence of love is darkness. Does that make sense? The absence of light is darkness. For there is light where darkness was before, and now the veil is lifted from their sight. The veil, if you don't understand what the veil is, it is the invisible realm that you cannot see with your human eyes. But once the veil comes off, you can see it with your spiritual eyes and your physical eyes. Does that make sense? So when Christ was on the cross, the veil fell, didn't it? Everyone remember that in the verse? Oh, the veil was torn, which is the same as it, it split from bottom to top, not top to bottom. So in other words, the veil is lifted. The veil across the face of Christ, the fear of God, and of salvation and the love of guilt and death they all are different names for just one era in other words they all mean the same thing so when you talk about fear you're also talking about hate when you talk about hate you're also talking about anger when you're talking about anger you're also talking about jealousy and so forth and so on the opposite works and when you love there is forgiveness and when you forgive then you are forgiven. When you are forgiven, then you find peace, et cetera, et cetera. Does that make sense? That there is a space between you and your brother and your sister kept apart by an illusion of yourself that holds them off from you and you away from them. In other words, 
When you judge, you separate. Not only there's an attack, there's a separation. Okay? The sword of judgment is the weapon that you give to the illusion of yourself that it might fight to keep the space that holds your brother and sister off unoccupied by love. In other words, when you're judging, it's very difficult to love. Matter of fact, it's almost impossible to love because most people judge in negative. They judge and to condemn. And even though they might think they aren't, but as soon as they judge, they've already defined it according to their beliefs, to their understanding and not God's. This is why even on the cross, the Christ said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So if he can hang there between twilight and death and ask for forgiveness, I think we can too, don't you? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yet, while you hold this sword, that's those who are holding the judgment, you must perceive the body as yourself for you are bound to separation from the side of them who holds the mirror to another view of what he or she is and thus what you must be. Okay, so we already told you, once you judge it, you're judging yourself. So it doesn't matter what they're doing. There's a little bit of that in you. No, pastor. Yes. Can someone read the next one? What is the temptation? but the wish to stay in hell and misery. And what could this give rise to but an image of yourself that can be miserable and remain in hell and torment? Mm -hmm. Who have learned to see their brother and sisters as this has saved themselves, and thus are they a savior to the rest? Mm -hmm. Everyone has got and trusted all because a partial savior world the one who is but partially saved. Yeah. The mm -hmm. only ones whom God has given you to save are but everyone you meet or look upon, not knowing who they are. All those you saw an instant and forgot, and those you knew a long while since, and those you will yet meet. Mm -hmm. They are remembered and they are not yet gone. Mm -hmm. For God has given you his son to say from concept that your brother and sisters ever have. Thank you for that. In your Bibles, it says, for God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. Why did he send the only begotten son? To bring a message. What was the message? Love yourself. Love one another. Love your neighbors. And the big one. Love your enemy. <laughs> he came to save us from the error. That's why he's the savior. Savior meaning undone. He came to undo all the mistakes that we made, all the judgments we made, all the fear we had, all the lack we had, all the doubt we had. He came to give us a different mind and show us the way. Thank you for reading that. Yet while you wish to stay in hell, how could you be the savior of the son of God? How would you know your brother or sister's holiness while you see them apart from yours? For holiness is seen through holy eyes that look upon the innocent within and thus expect to see it everywhere. This is why we always tell you to see the good, the holy, and the beautiful. Why? Because in the beginning, he blessed everything and made it what? Good. And if he made it good, it was holy and it was beautiful. That's how God creates the good, the holy, and the beautiful. So if, regardless of what that person is saying or doing or acting, it is still God's will because he made them good, holy, and beautiful. Does that make sense? And so they call it forth in everyone they look upon. What do we call upon? Them as being innocent. Why? Because but God can forgive. Thank God he can forgive. Who can forgive? Everyone who made a mistake. And so they call it forth in everyone they look upon that your brother and sister may be what they expect of them. This is the Savior's vision that your brother and sister see their innocent and in all they look upon and see their own salvation everywhere. 
They hold no concept of themselves between their calm and open eyes and what they see. They bring light to what they look upon and they may see it as it really is. For those who have walked into a tense meeting and was smiling while you walked into the tense meeting and raised the vibration, you brought the light because people who fed into that energy are looking at you going, are you crazy? Why are you smiling? Why are you happy? This meeting is miserable. And then you say something profound, like a joke, or you say something to ease the tension. And even the one who's bringing that energy, he or she begins to lighten up a little bit because you bring the light. Nobody wants to be miserable because miserable doesn't feel good. They hold no concept of themselves between their calm and open eyes and what they see. They bring light to what they look upon. Everything you look upon, you bring light. Why? Because you are the light that they may see what it really is. Whatever form of temptation seems to take, it is always, it always, but reflects a wish to be a self that you are not. And from that wish, a concept rises teaching you that you are the thing you wish to be. It will remain your concept of yourself until the wish that fathered it no longer is held dear. But while you cherish it and hold on to it, you will behold your brother and sister in the likeness of the self whose image has the wish begotten you. For seeing can but represent a wish because it has no power to create. Yet it can look with love or look with hate. You either love one or hate the other. I'm required, I like them, but I ain't got to love them. Or I, I love them, but I ain't got to like them. Really? That's just confusing. And they don't believe that themselves either. Let me tell you that. <laughs> you can look with love or look with hate, depending only on the simple choice of whether you would join with what you see or keep yourself apart and separate. That's it. We told you, you only have two choices. What you want, what you don't want. The Savior's vision is an innocent of is an innocent of what your brother and sister is, as it is free of any judgment made upon yourself. It sees no past in anyone at all. You know how many funerals that I've done? where the person who has transitioned or died and the people who are living always go, especially if there was a disagreement or argument and they left mad or left upset, it's always that guilt of, I wish I could have said, I'm sorry. I wish I could have asked for forgiveness. I wish I could have did this while they were living. Or I remember what that person did to me 50 years ago. He borrowed two dollars from me and didn't pay me back and went and bought something over there when I know hold on to that stuff man we see it all the time we hear it all the time people holding on to people's past without forgiving and without letting it go and giving it to God and thus it serves a holy open mind unclouded by old concepts and prepared to look on only what the present holds it cannot judge because it does not know. And recognizing this, it merely asks, what is the meaning of what I behold? Then is the answer given and the door held open for the face of Christ to shine upon the one who asks in innocence to see beyond the veil of old ideas and ancient concepts held so long and dear against the vision of the Christ in you. What does that mean? So if I've been thinking one way for a long time and all of a sudden I say, you know what, this has not been working for me. Let me try a different way. And then the Holy Spirit becomes in and begins to give you the answer and begins to teach you. Now the doors are open and then you begin to see those old ideas, those old concepts leave you. Then you begin to see the Christ within you. Christ means the anointed one. You begin to see the anointing upon your life. Greater is he who is in you. Who's the greater in you? God. I'm glad you said that. Is yeah. God unconditional love? Absolutely. Can God, can God do anything? Absolutely. Keep that in mind. That is also part of the Christ. 
Here's the key. Be vigilant against temptation. Then, remembering that it, was, it is but a wish, insane and meaningless, to make yourself a thing that you are not. You ever seen somebody mimic somebody else when you know that's not who they are? They act like another person. And then normally not in a good way because then they don't know who they are. Hmm. And think as well upon the thing that you would be instead. It is a thing of madness, pain and death, a thing of treachery and black despair, of failing dreams and no remaining hope except to die and end the dream of fear. This is temptation, nothing more than this. Can this be difficult to choose against? Consider what temptation is and see the real alternatives you choose between. There are but two. We just told you there are only two choices. Be not deceived by what appears as many choices. There is hell or heaven, rich, poor, love, hate. And of these, you choose but one. This is why in your Bible it says, you will love one and do what with the other? Hate it. Let not the world's light given unto you be hidden from the world. It need the light. It needs the light. For it is dark indeed, and men and women despair because the Savior's vision is withheld and what they see is death. You ever hear somebody that all they talk about is doom and gloom? Nothing goes right in their life. Nothing can go right in their life. Nothing goes right. Doesn't matter what they do, how hard they pray. Nothing goes. It's like they carry that black cloud around with them and nothing goes right. Yes. And sometimes when I tell those kind of people, but you are, you can change, you can, you can be different. And then they, they will just say, uh, but you are, you are different. You see, yep. so, so they, they know that I was different with, from them, and yet mm -hmm. they say they don't want to be different from yep. what their reality is. Absolutely. And the reason why is because they believe in that era. They believe in that, and it becomes habitual, where now they have become creatures of habit of their thinking. Even your Bible says, so a man think it in his heart, so becomes that man. So if you think it long enough that I'm poor, I'm poor, I'm poor, I'm poor, I'm poor, I'm poor, how rich will you really be? You won't see no increases in your check. You won't see no financial gain. You won't see no economic relief. You won't see any of those things because now they've created a habitual thought that they think that they are. That makes sense? Thank you for that. Great answer. Their savior stands unknowing and unknown beholding them with eye unopened and they cannot see until they look on them with seeing eyes and offer them forgiveness with their own. Can you to whom God says, release my son, be tempted not to listen when you learn that it is you for whom God asks release. And what but this and what but this, what this course would teach? And what but this is there for you to learn? That makes sense to everyone? Pretty straightforward. Any comments, questions, concerns about the Savior's vision? Anyone want to press out then? No one? All right. Heavenly Father, once again, we just thank you. We love you. We adore you. We thank you for this opportunity, Holy Spirit, for teaching us the Savior's vision that we can be more forgiving of ourselves, forgiving of others, not to judge them as we don't judge ourselves. We thank you that we can only see in love, compassion, peace, forgiveness, kindness, happiness, abundance, prosperity. We pray for those of you put before us new and old that all we say and do is of you and not of ourselves, which is unconditional love. We pray that they can see the light within us, that they can be enlightened themselves, that they may come from a dark place into a lightened world. We bless over those that are going through trial and tribulation, that you ease their tribulation, give them the answers, open up the doors, give them the Christ mind. Bless us as we depart this meeting, 
that will give us traveling grace, blessing over our food, our clothes, our finances, our transportation, blessing over our neighbors, our family, our friends, those less fortunate ourselves, the homeless on their journey. We thank you for blessing and healing within our bodies for those who are in need of healing, of sick stricken bodies that they change their mind. We thank you for so many things we cannot thank you enough. In Christ's name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. 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 We love you all. We love you all. We love you all. Say it back. Say it back. Say it back. Come on. Love you. All right. We love you all too. We will see you all during this week, prayerfully tomorrow. If you're all able to get on tomorrow evening, we will have a great discussion then. We love you all. We bless you all. Have a magnificent day deliberately creating. Bye-bye, y'all.